Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today on Animal Zone, it's cats and dogs a go-go. Tamar Geller, the celebrity dog coach, will share important insights about how you can be as good as your dog thinks you are. Then we're going to be talking with Mitch Telson, former president of Petco, who will share his pet passion, adopting collies. Lassie, come home. <laughs> then we'll be visiting a cat house of sorts called Cat Therapy. It's a new adoption center concept. And finally, we'll find out how Mindy Mahi brought home her babies to her dog Sansom. So it's time for a stroll into the Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Oh, honey puppies. Uh, Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. We're here again today with Tamar Geller, the expert on animal behavior, and even a little bit of human behavior like me. <laughs> uh, and how great to have you back tomorrow. Now, you were telling me the other day there are six core needs. Yeah. Tell me what that means. Okay, so people come to me when the dog is misbehaving. Uh, and I can look at the dog and say, you're doing X, I'll stop it. Or I can go and I can say, hmm, there's a reason why you're behaving that way. Meaning instead of trying to squash the dog's feeling and spirit mm -hmm. right. is to say, oh, what's going on? What are you trying? Why are you doing that behavior? So what I went, what I did is I went back and I looked at all these people who really are phenomenal at understanding behavior and modifying behavior. One of them is uh, obviously, obviously Abraham Maslow, the renowned psychologist who talked about the pyramids of needs. But another one is my dear friend, Tony Robbins, who took that and made it even better. And the pyramid of needs. The six, Tony calls it the six uh, basic needs of people. And what's interesting is dogs out of these six needs that people have share with us five of those needs. Well, what are they? But before I tell you what are they, I would say that anytime a human or a dog does any behavior, they're doing it in order to meet a need. But that, yeah, I, I, I've done that. I've so, misbehaved a few times to get so, some kind of reaction that's exactly or need. Right. Yeah. So here are the needs. So one of the needs, I'll go in front of you here. So one of the need is the need for certainty, for safety, for predictability. Meaning if we're standing here in this beautiful thing and all of a sudden there was a tsunami, we would not be going on as normal. Okay, we all like to feel that we are in control that there's nothing weird happening if we had like bees coming here all of a sudden. Dogs the same. They don't like to feel that they're out of control, that something can happen to them. The other need though is the need for uncertainty because too much certainty can be like a groundhog day. Boring. Boring. Yeah. Where you have food but it's the same food every day. It's boring. The other two needs is the need to fit in. Love and belonging. We fit in. I'm not here dress like with a bathing suit, it would be inappropriate for that show. On the beach, it would be inappropriate if I'm dressed like that. Yeah, right. I think if you're in a bathing suit on this show, you'll, our ratings will go higher. <laughs> Not so sure, but thank you. But you know what I mean? It's kind of yes. like the fitting, the fitting in, but within fitting in, we want 
to stand out, we want to be noticed. Like Oprah says, we all want to be seen, we all want to be recognized. So that is the need for significance. The fifth need that people and dogs share is the need for growth. Everything in nature is either growing or dying. Think about a balloon. If you inflate it and you leave it doing nothing, it will deflate. Just to keep it the same way, you have to keep inflating it. Mm -hmm. So everything in life is about growth. These are the fifth needs that we share with the dog. The sixth need, just sideline, side for people is the need for contribution. Since dogs are about contribution, I changed the sixth need to physical exercise. Dog must have physical exercise for the well-being. So okay. do we. I mean, I need for exercise. Us is good. Just Some walking through this here. tunnel, I need a little exercise. Yes, but, but now, here is. But let me let me yeah. just say something. So, for example, if a dog, a lot of people come to me with the dogs who are aggressive, and what they think is that the dog needs significant, that the dog want to be dominant, and it's actually not the case. Ninety-nine percent of aggression, and I want everybody to hear it. Ninety-nine percent of aggression is actually for safety. Hmm. The dog needs certainty. The dog needs predictability. So when are the most aggressive? When they're on a leash. Yeah. Because they feel, I don't have the option of running away. I don't have the option of not moving. What they would do in nature, just blend in. So the only option between freeze, flight, or fight, they can't freeze, they can't flight, is to fight. So what happens is, is I teach a dog how to meet his need by not being reactive, but actually connecting to the parent. And I teach the parent how to teach the dog that they got it, that they got the dog's safety. We would do it with children. Why not to do it with our dogs? So the dogs will understand same. that they're safe because of what you do. That's exactly right. It's unbelievable how it works because ultimately dogs do not want to fight. Yeah. Nobody wants to put themselves in, in that environment. Oftentimes the best defense is offense and dogs go into those offensive situation, aggression, which most of my clients either get puppies or I get when they're older and they go in coming to me with aggression. And aggression, most of the time, they're associated with unsafety, being unsafe. They don't have certainty that they're gonna be safe. So I need to turn it around. So when you go to adoption center yes. and you adopt or what we say, an orphan dog. An orphan dog, yes. Which I like a lot better, an yes. orphan dog, compared orphan to a rescue. Dog. Yes. Uh, they probably are arriving with a little bit of uncertainty. 100%. From their life. 100%. So how do, you, how do you shift that? How, 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 it's going to take time, no? It's going to take time, and what it is, is what makes us feel safe? Predictability. So predictability of no matter what you do, I am not going to hurt you. You can be the biggest jerk because remember that dog right now comes to you with nobody you spend time with that dog. The dog might not have anything wrong with him other than that nobody invested in that dog to teach them how to be mindful, meaning polite, that just completely based on impulse. So they jump on you, they bark, da, 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 da. nothing is wrong with the dog. Just because they're homeless doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them, emotionally or not. They can be the most amazing dogs. I have two rescue dogs here with me. They're the most amazing dogs. Nothing was wrong with them emotionally, but nobody taught them how to behave in our society. Coming from a different culture, mm -hmm. let me tell you, it's not easy to be a part of this society here in America. You guys have rules that are not necessarily my rules in Israel mm -hmm. or dogs' rules. So there's nothing, nothing is wrong with them, but nobody invested in them because somebody who invested in a dog would not put a dog in a shelter. I'm, I'm beginning to get the idea, and I think my dog wants to learn more from you. My dog wants me to teach you more. I think he does. But yeah. you're a phenomenal, you're a phenomenal dog parent. Seriously. Oh, well, thank you, Tamara, and thank you again for all these great insights. Will you come back again on Animal Zone? Anytime you want, all as right. long as I'm with this gorgeousness. <laughs> Love it. All right, we'll be back in just a few minutes here on Animal Zone. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts, and you're watching Animal Zone. And believe me, the animals can't adopt one another. We need to step in with our brain and help them get along. Adopt an animal. It'll give you joy. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home.
The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Well, hi there. We are at Mitch Telson's house. Mitch is the former president of Petco, and we're with his eight beautiful collies. And Mitch, what, how did you start adopting collies? What, what made you do that? Well, we had, we, look, fantasy, it's okay, girl. When we got married, we had uh, Wolfie, who was a collie shepherd, and unfortunately we lost him after the first month, and Jeff and I were without a dog. <laughs> Guys, please, I'm talking. We were without a dog for about six months, and then we got Traveler. And then it just seemed to snowball after that. It was one after another after another. I can't talk with you talking. <laughs> and, and most recently, we've, we've, we've actually adopted them two at a time, uh, usually bonded pairs, older dogs. Um, the, the rule around here is that I can adopt dogs as long as they're seniors and or disabled. So you'll notice that there's a couple of them over here, these two white ones, are, were born deaf and both of them are losing their sight. This one, in fact, is totally blind now. Wow. Now I notice you have all these wonderful photos of you and <laughs> Daphne with your collies uh, as Christmas cards. Yes. And that goes out every year? Every year. So do you notice any changes over the years? Uh, well, uh, Jeffany's remained the same, but I've gotten older. <laughs> With a, unfortunately, as happens from year to year, particularly when you adopt older dogs, we lose them. Sure. So there has not been a, a year to year picture that has the same dogs in it. We lose some and then we adopt some more because they need homes. Well, now, yeah, I remember Lassie and collies like that. Are, are they very smart like Lassie was? They are very smart. They're, there's a ranking of dog intelligence. It puts the poodle on the top and it puts a border collie very close to that. Regular collies, rough collies, and or smooth collies uh, rank in the top 10, usually around number eight. But I don't know how they do the intelligence test because my guys are awfully smart. <laughs> like father, like son, right? <laughs> do, do, are collies good family dogs? Wonderful, great. Just, just think, Lassie. Think classy with, with Timmy from the, from the old TV series. They are just great with kids. They're great with each other. They're great with families. They're great with cats, with rabbits. Uh, you very seldom have a collie with a bad disposition. And how about their health issues? Uh, they're, they're a relatively healthy dog. They'll, their lifespan is uh, 12 to 14 years. Um, all of these guys have some health issues. Uh, fortunately, not life-threatening now. The oldest one we have is quiet, quiet, fantasy, quiet girl. The oldest one we have is 12. Most of their, is their health issues affect their back, and as most big dogs do. And they all seem to get on pretty much together, don't they? Uh, they'll, they'll squabble every once in a while, but it's never anything serious. And the only time they really squabble is when they're, they're complaining about not getting enough attention. Uh -huh. Well, thanks so much, Mitch. This is really an eye-opening experience to be around all these wonderful collies and your love for animals. So we appreciate you coming on Animal Zone. Thank you. All right, we'll nice. be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Christina Sisk. I'm the veterinarian at the Santa Barbara Humane Society, and you are watching Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. 
SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. Today we're at Cat Therapy at 1213 State Street in Santa Barbara with the owner of Cat Therapy, Catalina, who we call Cat. <laughs> and she's got a few kittens with her too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Now, Catalina, where did you come from originally? I am from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, and I moved here uh, about five years ago. And what got you to open up this place? Yeah, so I volunteered at a rescue in town called Rescue Cats uh, for about two years and I loved it and I decided, you know, I really wanted to do something um, animal related and um, I came across the idea of cat cafes and cat cafe experiences um, as a way to help more kitties get adopted and then also foster them in a, in a comfortable environment and I loved it and so, um, yeah, work began to open this. So people can come here and just pay a fee to uh, kind of commune with the kitties. Yeah, so um, basically the way that we sustain the, the space uh, for the cats is through the contribution fees that people pay to enter. Um, and so when they come here, not only they get to experience being in a room with 38 cats and kittens, which is really sweet, <laughs> but um, also they are helping you know, keep the space alive for these guys that have, most of the times they have nowhere else to go. Now, I'm looking around and all the cats seem to be very mellow. They seem to be really happy with one another. There's no cat fights, huh? <laughs> no, um, it is meant to be a really relaxing, um, you know, space for them. Um, and it, it seems to be working, <laughs> I would say. So yeah, we, we want to promote, you know, um, a comfortable, loving environment for them. And um, so that, you know, when people walk in and they see them so relaxed and being themselves, it's more likely that they want to take them home. And how many adoptions have you had? Uh, the past six weeks we've had 30, about 34 adoptions. Uh, since we opened in May 2017, uh, we've had 199. That's so terrific. We're almost at 200. Wow. And so people can come in here. Obviously, you have a ro ro revolving door of animals that come in. I mean, there's kittens being born all the time, especially as the springtime comes around. We're going to see a lot of kittens. Yeah. Uh, anybody can come in and if they qualify. How do, you, how do you make sure that someone can qualify to take on the responsibility of a cat? Yeah, so for us, it's really important to make sure we do um, some counseling before someone applies to adopt a cat. Um, we want to make sure it's the right fit, not only for the cats, of course, um, but for the person as well. Um, and so we have a little interview here. We talk about what they're looking for and um, what their ideal, you know, pet situation would be, which looks very different for many different people. Um, and once we figure that out, we have a, an, an application, an adoption application, and a phone call, uh, which has another interview. And then if that works out and they're approved, then they can take the kitty home. Now, you know, some people want to look at adopting a cat specifically to deal with pest control, like r mice or rats or gophers. Uh, do you have She has her own kitties? opinions about that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have cats that are, are all right for outdoor experience? So these kitties that we get here are rescued from high kill shelters in the LA area. Um, most of them are rescued as babies. Uh, a lot of people don't know that neonatal kittens have, you know, one of the highest risk of, of being euthanized uh, in those shelters. And so those are the ones that we foster the most. Um, and they're not really, you know, the, we, we want them to be indoors. Um, they've been raised, hand raised by people, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're just only indoor kitties, this, this guy is. <laughs> yeah, we and do, yeah. So they're looking for, for loving families, but not necessarily mousers. Yeah, maybe spiders in the house, <laughs> or you know, like my cats do, but yeah, they're indoor kitties. Now, I know that I've got a, a, a wonderful little kitty named Electra, and uh, she loves to climb up curtains and screens and all that. I'm trying to s sort of m make her go towards more the scratching post. Yeah. Uh, are there s tricks to getting a kitty to go to a scratching post? Um, so you first have to figure out what 
texture they like. So if you notice that they're scratching like the fabric of the curtain, then maybe that is something they're attracted to. So maybe finding a scratching pose that resembles that. Um, you know, also Kitty, some of them like vertical scratching, some like uh, more like horizontal scratching. So you have to notice the patterns at home. Um, and then figure out where, like if they're scratching the, the curtains, maybe that's in the living room, so they want to you know, mark, leave their scent in the living room. Mm. Um, so maybe you should put, you know, the scratching post in the living room instead of hiding somewhere in the house. Um, so those things, and then there is um, a spray that we use sometimes, it's like a cat deterrent um, that I use for furniture that I don't want my kitties to scratch, and then catnip for the ones that I do want them to scratch. Oh, so you could put some catnip on the scratching post. Yes. And that might help them get inspired. Yeah, if something that, you know, if your piece of furniture smells really yucky for them, but the scratching post smells really good then it's most more likely they're going to go to that um, so those are some very easy tips, <laughs> <laughs> tips. now what about cat food you know you, you see all the aisles and aisles of different kinds of cat food is there a particular cat food that you think is better for cats and kittens than others yeah so we feed them um, wet food in the morning wet food in the evening we really believe that that's you know uh, more in line with their digestive systems eating wet food um, and food that have a lot of moisture um, and dry food is just a snack for us uh, we don't like free feed them dry food like all the time as their main meal um, and then we try to go for grain-free food that has no fillers uh, we think kitties should be you know we've consulted a lot with different veterinarians and you know kitties we don't want them being like eating gluten or or maybe uh, cheap you know fillers and food uh, just to make them cheaper um, so we feed them uh, a lot of different things um, but we feed them blue wilderness a lot um, fussy cat is one of our favorites and kitties love it um, oh, yeah. she's like, yes. some fussy cat. <laughs> Um, different things, Veruba, um, we just try to see which one they like because some kittens like different flavors and stuff. I've noticed that cats, especially kittens, have so much energy, and especially at night when you're trying to sleep. But one of the strategies I've heard is you try and wear them out a little bit. You play with them yeah. a lot before it's bedtime. Yeah. And that might help. Are there any uh, special toys or games or things you do with your kitty that uh, or kittens that, that will help them? go to sleep and sleep better? Um, it's usually recommended to like use one toys because um, you know it's away from your hand and so they don't get in the habit of biting your hand but also playing with them a lot right before meal time and then by the time that meal time comes then they just groom and they they most most of the times they just fall asleep and then it is said that it's best to um, if they're trying to wake you up when you're sleeping to just ignore them like whatever you you know whatever they're doing just ignore them that way they learn that they can't wake you up and then eventually they stop that's what i've done with my kitties and with one of them it worked with one of them it didn't but you know the one that jumps on my head at night in the middle of the night and starts playing with my hair that's the one that's a little <laughs> ignore bit ignore him when he does that ignore, <laughs> as hard as that sounds just yeah, yeah. <laughs> well this is great i feel like i've had some therapy today with cat uh, catalina of cat therapy and uh Come on down and check them out because you can find your next forever friend right here at uh, Cat Therapy. Yeah, and it's a place where you can really get to know their personalities and see how they act around people, around other cats. All right, thanks so much, Catalina. We're going to be right back with a little bit more after these words. I'm Denise Sanders, the Director of Communications here at the Search Dog Foundation, and you're watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today, and don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Today we're in front of the beautiful Santa Barbara Biltmore, looking out over the Pacific Ocean, and we've got the beautiful Melinda Mahi with us and her wonderful dog, Samson. Thank hey you guys. guys. So, yeah. so good to have you here. We are happy to be here. Uh, you're an animal lover, and I understand you've been an animal lover forever. I have. I've always been passionate about animals. I mean, 
We've always had a dog growing up. We've had rabbits, we've had cats, and they just bring so much joy to our lives. They sure do. And you had, when you were, you had, a, I think, was it a Cocker Spaniel? Yes, we had Roscoe. So I, we had him for 13 years, and he was my best pal, my secret keeper. Um, and I still think about him every time it's his birthday in July. Oh, well, <laughs> well, growing up with a dog is the most wonderful thing for any any kid, really. And yeah. and I gather now Samson has got some uh, some new friends he's growing up with too. He does. Samson was the first child, uh -huh. um, and then since he's had two brothers come along, so he's had to share the space a little bit. Well, that's a good question because you know sometimes when you have. Uh, a dog, and that's the baby, right? Right. Between you and your husband, Justin, this is the baby. Yep. And then all of a sudden, there's another baby, and this one is a two-footed one. How do you introduce a baby into a family that's already got a dog that thinks it's the center of the universe? You know, you, you just you, you ease it in slow, just like anything else. You know, you just kind of let him hang out with the baby one-on-one, -on -one, of course, with you supervising at a safe distance. But he loves his brothers, and right now I think is the most challenging point for Samson because one of the oldest one is a toddler, so likes to pretend to ride him and things like that. But you know, teaching them patience and and both the child and him, it there's a bond that can't be broken. I mean, little kids are just they just love dogs, and and generally dogs love them. But sometimes they might pull on their ears or right. poke them in the nose or do things like that, which you know, you got to be aware of. You definitely have to be aware of it. And no matter the temperament of the dog, there can be a breaking point for anybody. But it's all about teaching the, the toddler love and respect and gentle. We say that several times a day, gentle, gentle. And we're getting there. So the dog is housebroken. Now are the kids housebroken? <laughs> we're getting there. It's a work in progress. It really is, isn't it? I guess it depends, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, when you're when you're having your dog in your life, uh, it's so exciting to have your kids learn about animals in general because they learn about uh, love and life. Uh, but of course, you know there comes a time the worst. You have the best days of your life when you have that dog, except for one day, which is when you lose the dog. Right. How do you deal with grief? You know, it's it's like losing losing your family member. They are your family member, and it's. I mean, how do you deal with grief with anything? You know, it's just one of those things that it's, you have to be prepared for it and it's inevitable that it's gonna happen, but we just love them every day as much as we can. Yeah, and enjoy every minute. Yeah. That's so true. Now, I know you have the wonderful bottled water that's the award-winning <laughs> bottled water called Kopu, all Indeed the way from New do. Zealand. All the way from New Zealand. In this magnificent, special kind of can. It looks so spectacular. Aluminum bottle, yeah. Now, does Sansom get a little chance to drink some of that? You know, only the champagne of waters for this one. <laughs> He's even got the uh, Kopu Blue collar on. He's always representing everywhere he goes. <laughs> for a dog who would normally drink out of a toilet, that's pretty great to be drinking bottled water. A hundred percent. You got it made. You got it made. Only the best for Samson. Well, I think Samson deserves a walk on the beach. I think we all deserve a walk on the beach. So we're going to take a break. And I'm going to go for a walk on the beach, and we'll be right back after these words. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. And 
I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie wanna be, oh, canine of mine. Friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.